everybody, I'm Jonathan Cook, the founder of Good Green Moving, and I just want to thank you guys for coming and joining the Good Green Moving team. We're going to make sure you get trained right so you do a really good job. Our mission at Good Green Moving is to minimize the carbon footprint and consumption of natural resources within the transportation industry while giving back to the global community. This is your training video, so you stay highly efficient and do a really good job to ensure our clients feel like they got the best moving experience possible. Welcome to Good Green Moving. Hi, my name is Matthew with Good Green Moving and today I'll be showing you how to make and pack the various types of boxes you'll be using here at Good Green. Throughout your employment here, you'll come across various types of boxes, various sizes. For the most part, we use about four different size, size boxes at Good Green. And that's going to be a small box, which is this one, which also could be named a book box, small, or a 1.5. 1.5 meaning 1.5 cubic feet. We have cube boxes, which are 3.0, 3, .0, 3, 3 cubic feet and then large boxes which are large and they're four fives 4.5 cubic feet all these boxes are going to be put together the same way they all have these top flaps with a connecting piece and you're going to want to fold these top flaps down before you open up the box to build it the reason for folding these flaps down is so when you get to the top of the box when you're packing it it's easily identifiable as soon as you get to the top and then you can fold the top flaps up as opposed to leaving these standing up and risking filling the box up too much. So you want to start by folding the top flaps down. Then you open the box up. Then you turn the box over. and you build the bottom. You always want to use three pieces of tape when you tape the boxes, on the bottom and the top. You start off with one in the middle and then two overlapping the middle piece about halfway on each side. Now you're ready to pack the box. Now we're going to show you how to wrap stemware. Stemware is wine glasses, champagne flutes, margarita glasses, anything that has a glass stem. You start off with two pieces of paper, you put the stemware piece in the corner, you flip over the small corner and give it a couple of rolls and then you fold in the sides and then you continue rolling the piece to the end of the paper. And that's how you wrap stemware. Now we're going to wrap a plate. Again, you start off with two pieces of paper. You place the plate in one of the corners. You flip up the corner into the plate and then you fold in the two sides and then you continue rolling the plate until the end of the paper. And that's how you wrap a plate. Next, I'm gonna show you how to wrap a bowl. Again, you start off with two pieces of paper, place the bowl in one of the corners, and you fold up that corner into the bowl, and then you follow suit with the two sides, and then you continue folding the bowl into the rest of the paper. And that's how you wrap a bowl. Now I'm going to show you how to wrap a teacup or a coffee cup. Again, you start off with two pieces of paper, cup in a far corner. You fold up that corner into the teacup or coffee cup, and then you fold in each side and continue rolling until the end of the paper. And that's how you wrap a teacup or a coffee cup. Now we're going to move on to what I'm just calling a valuable item or a miscellaneous item. This could be anything uh, from a butter dish, a gravy dish, to 
porcelain or crystal figurines that people have to decorate their house. It's generally the same process as we would use to wrap almost anything else. But something like this isn't perfectly square, it's not flat, it uh, has an odd shape around it. You still go with the same process. When in doubt, use more paper than less paper, but generally it'll be about two pieces. So you start off with two pieces, put it in the corner, you fold up the corner piece, and sometimes with smaller items, you'll have extra paper that overlaps and overhangs. You just have to fold those overhangs and overlaps back into the piece you're wrapping. And that's how you wrap a miscellaneous piece. Now we're gonna show you how to pack those pieces into boxes. Now, when you start off, each box is gonna have what we call fluff at the bottom of it. And fluff is simply pieces of packing paper crumbled up to create sort of a fluffy, cushiony foundation for the pieces that you're putting in that box. So you wanna pre-fluff your box before packing it. So with the stemware pieces, you lay them flat on top of the fluff and you can either go from left to right or right to left or from front to back, but as long as they cover the majority of the area on the bottom of the box. Now, once you get to the point where you can't fit another piece down in there, you're gonna to wanna to cover that layer of stemware with the fluff underneath it with another layer of fluff on top before you start your next layer of stemware. You don't wanna have pieces touching themselves. Not even if there's paper that's around the pieces that are touching, you don't even want that. You wanna want each piece to be surrounded by its own layer of fluff, top and bottom. Another layer of stemware, another layer of fluff, another layer of stemware, another layer of fluff, however many times until you get to the top of the box. At which point, you finish the top of the box with a layer of fluff. Plates, again you start off with a foundation of fluff and instead of plates being down flat, just like the style you would be using them if you ate out of them, you lay them on edge. So the plates go standing up on edge and again you can pack them from left to right or right to left and then once you can't fit any more plates in, sometimes depending on the shape of the box, you can fit some in either in front or behind of your row that you have going. And if you can't, you fill the gaps with more fluff. Once you have your layer of fluff and your layer of plates, you can put another layer of fluff on top and continue after that. And continue either with more plates or finish the box off with a layer of fluff and close it up pack bowls inside the boxes. Again, you start off with your layer of fluff, the foundation of fluff, and then instead of packing bowls flat as if you would eat out of them, you pack them on their sides and pack them on their edges. So they're pretty much gonna be standing up on edge. And so you start from left to right or from right to left, and you fill the box as much as you can with the bowls, and then you put a layer of fluff on top of that and you continue however many layers you can get until you reach the top of the box. Now to pack coffee cups and tea cups, again you start off with a layer of fluff on the bottom and then you stack the cups either right side up or upside down. You stack accordingly to how well they fit together in the box. So if they fit better when one's upside down and one's right side up next to each other, then you're, it's okay to do that. Or if they're all the same size and you just stack them all right side up, that's also fine. But you don't want them down on their sides. You always want them either right side up or upside down. Things that you'll run into when you're actually in a house packing boxes, you're not always gonna have a box filled with the same items. You're not always gonna have a box 
that has only plates and has only bowls. A lot of times you'll run into having to pack multiple items inside the same box. What we do in those situations is we still start off with the bottom layer of fluff and if you have multiple items such as plates, bowls, say coffee cups, and some stemware. What you're going to want to do is start off with the heavier, thicker items on the bottom and as in for the base and the foundation and the thinner, lighter items on top. So in that example that I gave you, you're going to want to have the plates on the bottom and then followed by a layer of fluff, followed by either the bowls or the coffee cups and then the top is gonna to wanna to be your stemware. So you don't wanna have stemware on the bottom and plates on top, you want plates on the bottom, stemware on top. Now that we've taught you how to build a box, how to pack a box, now we're going to talk about how to label a box. So if it came out of the kitchen and it has plates and bowls in it, you label on the tape and not on the cardboard, kitchen, colon, plates and bowls. If it had vases and cups in it, you would say kitchen, colon, vases and cups. The label on the side only has to have the abbreviation of which room the box came out of, not what's in the box. 